There we go. We're recording. Okay. And good morning once again, our friends. I am Lashara Fullwood with my cohort, Hillary Swart, Alyssa Lemon from Queen City Bites, and our wonderful partner with Queen City Bites, the wonderful Kayla Johnson. She is here from Method. <laughs> and we are going to review resumes, interviews, and the job hunt series with her. Now let's talk about these Zoom features, my friends. So as I said, please mute yourselves unless you raise your hand and ask us questions in the chat. We will be looking for that. The mute button is here on your, depending on your screen, it could be on your lower left or your top header. So there's the mute feature. You can start your video or not. This is what it will look like. Participants, that's all of you fabulous people. So this is where you will see us at the bottom. Don't worry about that. I'll try not to break the screen, okay, you guys? <laughs> the chat is right down there. It should look like that no matter where your header is or your lower header for your Zoom situation. And we are going to hopefully have a live transcript for you all as well. And now let's do these quick tips. I am a Mac girl. I always need keyboard shortcuts, my friends. So here's command tab. It will make your life simpler. For you other wonderful Android Windows folks, here is our alt tab for you to switch between apps. Control alt tab will allow you to use your arrow keys and enter to select your apps. And of course the Windows logo, which usually works, will make your life simpler, just in case your arrow keys are not friendly. <laughs> Now, as I said, welcome to the Charlotte McLeod Library, Queen City Bites, fantastic resumes, interviews, and job hunt program with our wonderful friend, Kayla Johnson. And she's from Method, as we said. And now we're gonna turn it over to Kayla. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I always feel the need to explain this to folks who are in the Charlotte area, um, if some of you are. Um, Method used to be Skookum. So if any of you who joined were familiar with Skookum, we used to do a lot in the community. We would host monthly tech talks and meetups at our office uptown all the time. Um, we were acquired, gosh, going on three, maybe three years ago. Um, and then within the last year, we merged with our sister company method and took on their name. So um, if you were familiar with Skookum back in the day, a lot of the same people, we have some new folks who've joined us, um, but we are under method now. So I always like to point that out to people who may have been familiar with us before. But um, so what I thought would make this the most productive for you, I don't have a deck or a presentation. Um, you know, when people just start reading things off, I feel like it's incredibly, you know, not personal, personal at all. Um, so I wanted to leave this really open ended as I kind of move through some of my tips and tricks and advice. So I definitely want you to ask questions. Um, like Law said, you can either put it in the chat, Alyssa will read those and I can answer them. Or if you raise your hand um, and you want to actually just speak through your microphone, you're welcome to do that as well. But I've split it up into a few different sections and figured we would kind of tackle one at a time, allow for questions after each. So it's not me just speaking at you for 30 minutes and then you have to you know, retain all of your questions. So what I wanted to start with first, um, and I get this a lot from candidates who are either just finishing college with their degree, maybe computer science, or they've just um, come out of a boot camp because they are doing a career shift. And the biggest question that I get is, where do I even start? Where do I look for engineering jobs? Or if you're somebody in the strategy space or the design space. Um, so for me, and this is also trends that I see, um, I've been working with Method for about three and a half years. Prior to that, I worked for about 10 years in higher education counseling students. So I worked in the financial services space and then did a lot of career and academic counseling. Um, so, you know, I'm probably compared to some people still newer in the field. So a lot of this was me learning as I went as well and kind of picking up on experience I've seen from other people that I know we've hired who have done well. So the first section I wanted to start with was where do I even begin? Where do I look? I'm new to this space. 
Um, or like I said, if you're somebody who's been at the same job for years and years and years, and you're looking to make a move, maybe struggling with where to look. Um, I have a couple tips for you on this first before we actually get into like resumes. Um, so I always tell people, and this is probably the academic counselor coming out of me, but I tell people all the time, like narrow down your dream companies. Um, you know, I love when I talk to candidates and this was especially the case with Charlotte people. Um, when we were Skookum, they would say, you know, Skookum was my dream job. Like that's where I wanted to land and stay forever. And that makes me feel awesome because I'm the first person you're talking to. And I'm like, this person's really excited about potentially working here. Um, so I always say, narrow down your dream companies. If you're not familiar with who those companies even are, um, my first go-to is, especially in Charlotte, and I'm sure this is the case with any city, is look up top workplaces. Um, there are several organizations that run those competitions throughout the year. I know for us, we've won um, a top workplace award, I think the last seven years in a row through the Charlotte Observer. Um, you can look it up. They post all of their top workplaces every year. They run the program every year. Um, and the Charlotte Business Journal is another one. Um, so those are quick places to start. They're normally organized by um, industry. So you can kind of narrow it down. You don't have to sift through hundreds of companies, um, but definitely check out top workplace award winners in your city. That's an easy place to start. And then from there, if you weren't familiar, you can kind of dig in and get some information on who they are as a company. Um, I also tell folks, especially if you're just starting out, um, I always tell people, whether you're a developer, a designer, maybe not so much if you teeter like in the strategy space, but especially for developers, um, have some kind of online portfolio in a way of projects that you've put together. I know a lot of people come out of boot camps or school and they don't have any professional experience yet, which is understandable, but you have all of these projects that you either completed while you were in your program or folks who have like passion projects and side projects that they've worked on on the side. So I would say have a place where those live. Um, I can tell you even, you know, at least on our side at Method, and we're getting a little bit better at this, um, we wish we could hire more junior developers. Um, a lot of our teams are structured with certain clients where it kind of forces us to hire or staff them with senior developers. Um, I think as we continue to grow, we'll be in a better spot to host and mentor junior developers more often. Um, but we've hired people before more in the design space who have had zero professional experience, but their passion projects and side projects were so stellar that we were like, shit, we need to hire you. And we did. And that's, you know, something new that we're seeing with people. So I'm like, please have a place where your projects live. Um, not even to say it has to be published online or like a website, but if you have a PDF somewhere where you could walk, you know, an engineering team through your work so they can see how your mind works and what your process looks like, I think that'll go a long way. Um, because there are a lot of nonprofits and startups who are dying to get help from developers and they often don't have a lot of money to spend, especially in the nonprofit space. Um, so I've talked to devs before who are starting out and they get involved in nonprofits who need their help developing things so that the nonprofit organization's winning because they're getting the work done. But you're also winning because you now have work that you can put on your resume or in your project portfolio. Um, so definitely seek out those opportunities. Um, I know it can be a bit daunting when you first start out and you're trying to land that first job and people are telling you left and right, we need someone more senior because I feel horrible when I have to tell people that myself. Um, but looking for opportunities where you can lend a hand to help build up your own resume is going to go a long way as well. And then something else I tell folks when they're first starting out um, and you're just starting like the application process, you've narrowed down some great companies, you've gone on their website, you're all excited, and then you don't maybe see a job that aligns with your background or your experience. Um, I am a huge fan of informational interviews. Um, if I, I don't think to this day, if somebody has reached out to me wanting an informational interview, I've said no to them. Um, and I'm super busy and I still make the time for it. So, I mean, that's probably a company 
by company thing um, and a personal thing. But um, if you don't see something that's a fit for you, a lot of sites will have, I know ours does, a spot where you can still submit your resume. Like, hey, I don't see anything posted right now. That's a great fit for me or aligns with my background. But here's my resume just in case. That's totally fine to do that. I'd go a step further and say, if there's somebody from HR or the engineering team who's willing to chat with me, I'd love to learn more about your company. Um, I think, you know, take it up a notch. Don't just like blindly send your resume in. I would go ahead and ask for an informational interview. Um, or if you apply for a job and you get a response that says, I'm so sorry, like we've moved forward with other candidates. I would respond to the email if you can and say, no problem. I understand. Would somebody be willing to chat with me even just for 15 minutes so I can learn more about you? I think that goes a long way. Um, so really, again, kind of, kind of to wrap up this portion, you know, when you're first starting out or you're looking to make a career shift or you're looking just to get into a new role and you're struggling with where to even start, like I said, I would narrow down some companies, um, definitely read reviews on them. Um, I can say, you know, platforms like Glassdoor, I think can be tricky, um, because it's often not the super happy people who are leaving reviews on the company. Um, so, you know, see if you can find information on their culture. Um, I've had people reach out to me on LinkedIn before just to ask me what it's like to work at Method. Um, so see if you can connect with people through LinkedIn. Like I said, search those top workplace winners in your city. That's going to go a long way. Um, and then see if there's work where you can help out with like some startups, nonprofits who are looking for help and always ask for an informational interview. Um, so I'll pause for now. I don't know if Alyssa, your hand is up. Do you yeah. have a question? There are some, well, I'm going to read them out from the chat, but, um, uh, someone is asking how valuable are portfolios if you're looking to get a senior position within the same area that you already work in? If you, that's a great question. I think if you're already senior and you already have the experience, probably not so much, especially if you're a developer, if you're a designer, totally different story, obviously, um, because we rely on your portfolio to see how you design. Um, if you're a developer and you're senior, I wouldn't worry about it. I know we don't look at them. I'm more thinking if you're a junior developer just starting out, you don't have professional experience yet, having a spot where you can at least show your work in some capacity would probably be helpful. That's probably more helpful as you're first starting out though. Yeah. That's a great and, question. Then, and then there's another one. I currently work for a company like Method that does consulting. I was always curious how I should present my different client projects on my resume without it seeming too cluttered. That's a great question. So what I would probably do, because you don't want clutter. I think I once had a 20 page resume and I mean, don't do that. Obviously, I'm not saying you're doing that, <laughs> but I would probably say, I don't think it's necessarily important to list out every single project. And we'll talk about resumes in a second. That's not necessary, especially if you work for a consultancy. I mean, you'll have a million on there. Um, I would probably more highlight on your key duties and responsibilities, the type of technology that you work with. Um, you can maybe give one or two project highlights if you want to, like if there were a couple that you really loved or you had a huge impact on and you're proud of, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with sharing a couple examples, um, because that will also come out in your interview, but don't feel a need to throw all of your projects on your resume. I would maybe narrow it down to one or two just to give an example. Otherwise I would maybe create more themes around it versus project details. Okay. Are there any other questions before I move on to resumes? No, good. Perfect. All right. Resumes. I have seen some crazy resumes, guys. Um, couple tips with resumes. I know, and again, this is my preference too. I think, you know, people get hung up on, um, like rules when it comes to resumes. Like there were a lot of people who were like, my resume will never be longer than one page. I think my resumes have always averaged like two pages. I would probably not go beyond two pages. Um, 
So first of all, I would probably start start with that. Um, If you are applying to a job, so let's say you find a role online, you're excited to apply for it. The biggest thing I could probably suggest is that you take a couple minutes and maybe tweak your resume just a little bit to better highlight the skills and duties of the role that align with your experience. Um, I know applying for jobs can be a pain in the butt um, and maybe like tweaking things here and there can also be a pain in the butt. Um, But I think it goes a long way because if you have someone like me who is not tech savvy at all, even though I have hired dozens and dozens of developers, when I go to your resume, I'm trying to pick out key things that I know I'm looking for, whether it's for just the role in general or project specific. Um, So like, let's say I'm looking to hire a developer who has a lot of experience in React. And you've done a lot of React in the past, but maybe your more recent roles have been more focused on Angular work. That's fine. Um, I would see if there are areas, if like React is kind of buried in there, but you know your stuff and you want to highlight that, not saying to lie, you know, I don't want you to like fabricate anything, but I would make sure if there are areas on your resume that you can bring more to the forefront. So it's a little more obvious that you have experience in the role that you're applying for that's going to go a long way. So, you know, take a couple extra minutes. If your resume is already perfect and kind of aligns with what you're applying for, great, you don't have to change it. Um, but I would maybe, you know, take a couple extra minutes, make sure that you read the the job description um, and kind of tweak where you think you can tweak a little bit because we want to highlight your skills. Um, I would also make your skills clear. Um, something I personally love again, because I'm not very tech savvy and I am not a developer in any way, um, is I love it when folks, and I feel like people are getting so fancy with resumes these days. Mine looks like a dinosaur. I think if I'd actually share it with people, but, um, having separate sections in your resume that outline the different like libraries or frameworks or different like tech stacks that you work with huge, um, Something else that I personally love, and I'm not saying you need to do this, um, but where people, I have seen folks list out their their skills or the different frameworks, libraries, whatever that they're familiar with, and they almost put like a meter next to it with how strong their experience is in it. Um, So I can see, you know what, maybe you are really strong in React, more middle of the road with Angular, like that for me is super helpful. Um, so, you know, making it obvious where your strengths lie is going to go a long way. Um, if I get resumes that are just like bullet point after bullet point, you know, you have your, your title and your role in the company, and then it's just a sea of ongoing bullets with like full sentences that I have to read through. I'll do it of course, but it'll take me forever. So if I can look at something and within 15 seconds, be like, this person could be awesome. I'll interview them. That's going to go a long way. So it's like almost like the more simple you can make it while also still highlighting everything that you know is probably the way to go. Um, And then two, if you're somebody who really enjoys different aspects of your job that aren't who necessarily coding, um, like I love if I see on resumes that people enjoy like mentorship. You know, if there's somebody who's more mid-level or senior and they say, you know, I enjoy mentoring a team of junior developers. I love that because everybody needs mentors. And we're always looking for folks at the company who are willing to help teach and grow other people. Um, So, you know, anything that's like non-direct experience to your day-to-day duty, but is still showing some kind of like community engagement or workplace engagement um, or different ways that you um, promote the company culture and how you add value to that also awesome. Um, we're a huge culture company. I like, I could babble on about it forever. Um, and I love when I can see that people are excited about helping others. They're excited to kind of add to the energy of the company. Um, so if there's a way for you to highlight that on your resume, if that's something you also enjoy, I would probably do that as well. So I'll pause there for now for questions. Okay, we've got one in the chat. Um, if I'm in a boot camp, how can I show my experience in a resume? What is the best way to show the projects I have worked on? 
That's a great question. And I've seen a lot of boot camp people who do that. Um, so I've seen, and you can do it a couple different ways. You could probably also find a template for this, I feel like online. Um, but what I've seen folks do is they break up their resume from professional experience to project work experience. Um, so they're not necessarily trying to show like, hey, this is professional work experience because it's not. It's project work that you've learned while you're in your boot camp. Um, but they still want to highlight it. So I would almost highlight those projects as if it was a role that you had and it was a real project team that you were involved in. So, you know, if you had a specific client you were working with, um, even if it was like a hypothetical client, you know, I would list that. What were the duties of the project? What was your role in it? Like I've seen folks who it was a project and they'll say like lead front end developer. Here are the technologies that I used. Here are the different duties and responsibilities I had in the team. Here were our outcomes. Um, you know, you, you can still highlight your involvement. I think the more almost like granular you can get with it to show what was your participation on that project is also huge. Um, you know, if I read what your project was about, well, that's cool. But if I don't know what your participation is or what your role was within it, that's not super helpful. So I would almost, you know, have a set, have a section for professional experience because that's still important even if you're shifting careers or you're just starting out. And then I would have a separate section titled um, like project work or project involvement and kind of list a few of those out. And again, if you have multiple projects, you also don't want to clutter your resume. So I would maybe choose like your top three. And maybe those are the three that you were more of like a lead in it. So you can show that you have the ability to kind of have a leadership type role on a project. Um, or maybe it was just a really fun, cool project that really excited you. So you don't have to list everything. I would maybe list a few. Um, and then again, when you're interviewing, those projects are going to get discussed. And you can always share with the person who's interviewing you. You know, I have others I can discuss with you. These were these were my favorite three. Is that helpful? It's great. Um Another one from the chat. I understand when a human is reading a resume, it's easier the way you mentioned to have charts and meters, but at least from what I read online, looks like the ATC bots that scan the resume do not really parse that through well. Do you think that becomes an issue? So that that's a great question. Um, I can't speak for other companies. I can speak for my company that an actual human looks at every single resume. Um, and it's often not me, which I think off surprises people. So I can't speak for other resumes that might scan. If that is known to be an issue, certainly something to think about. Um, I know for us, um, the way that we, we work, because we're normally hiring dozens of people at a time. Um, if I have a specific role that I need somebody to screen resumes for, it's normally somebody from the team. Sometimes it's even the hiring manager. So by the time you actually get to me, somebody who actually knows what they're talking about in the tech space has looked at your resume and said, this person could be a good fit. I'm going to have somebody from recruiting talk to them. Um, so again, that's a great call out. I would maybe look into that a little bit more. I would also hope that the more people that are using those types of templates, hopefully the bots that are scanning for it maybe get a little bit better at picking up on key like skills and words. But um, at least for, like I said, for me personally, um, I mean, we could get a hundred resumes. Somebody is actually looking at every single one of those 100 resumes. Um, I'd like to add my personal experience um, that especially for a developer job, if you're just blanket applying in like a um, monster.com or whatever it is um, that are usually the ones that have the bots, that's probably not going to be your best avenue to find the right fit for you. Um, as Kayla has said, like, you know, making it more personal, talking to the hiring managers, going to those companies and having informational interviews is probably going to get you a lot farther than just sending out a bunch of resumes through a service. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a good call. Thanks, Alyssa. Was there any, were there any other questions before I move on to fabulous interview tips? No, cool. This is my favorite part because this is the part that I really enjoy. Okay, 
um, interview tips. So a lot of this might seem incredibly obvious to you, but I'm still stunned by how a lot of people don't think about some of these things. So I at least wanted to call out if you're like, I knew all this already, then you're golden. You're probably somebody that we love talking to. So first of all, I would say, especially if you're, and I, you know, and I get that you're probably not just applying to one or two companies. You might be applying to companies that you're not terribly familiar with. You're not familiar with the type of work that they do. Do some research. I'm not saying you need to cram like the night before, like you were in college trying to study for an exam and you need to know every single project and everything. I mean, I've interviewed people who will bring up projects that my company has done. And I'm like, we did that. <laughs> like you could tell they like really went into the weeds. Um, that's not necessary, but I think having a general idea of what the company does, getting an idea for the type of work that they do, nobody's going to expect you to recite, you know, clients or project work or anything like that, but at least having a general idea of what the company does and what they're about is huge. Now, again, that might seem super standard, um, but you'd be surprised at how many people I interview that, you know, I'm normally like, I don't know if you're familiar with us, if you checked out our website or looked at any of our case studies, but, um, you know, is there anything I can answer for you about method? And you'd be so surprised at how many people say, yeah, what do you guys do again? And it's, I get that you're probably juggling a lot, but even if you're applying to dozens and dozens of companies, you know, at least 10 minutes, maybe before we meet, give yourself a little refresher, just so you're aware. I'm not going to quiz you on anything, um, but it just doesn't give the vibe that you're excited or weren't excited enough about the company or opportunity to not even take a peek at our website. So do a little bit of research, have a decent idea of what they do um, before you talk to um, anybody who might be interviewing you. Um, same thing with the job description. Um, you know, again, you're applying to a lot of roles. A lot of them are probably similar. I know when I was job hunting, I had a legit spreadsheet that had what the role was, who the company was when I applied and I saved the job description just so, cause I had people reach out to me for interviews and I didn't even remember applying to them and I had to go back through, but at least I had it documented somewhere. So if you're in a period where you're applying to so many that you can't keep them straight, having some kind of organization around it might help you just so you come in appearing prepared, even if you're not that prepared. Um, I would also suggest that when you're interviewing, be excited. Um, I have not moved people forward before simply based off of them seeming like they didn't care that they were talking to me. Maybe skills wise, they could have done the job. But if I get off the phone and like that person seemed agitated that they had to talk to me and they applied to this job. And for me, that's probably not a culture fit for us. Like that might not be somebody who's excited about their team or their work. So it's probably not a good fit. Um, I'm not saying you have to do cartwheels on your Zoom call or anything like that. But I think having a certain level of energy to tell the person interviewing you that you're excited about the opportunity, you're excited to be talking to them, you appreciate their time. Um, radiates through a lot. And like on the flip side, I've talked to people who maybe weren't the best fit, but we had such a fun conversation and they were such a pleasure to talk to that I moved them forward. And then we ended up hiring them um, because it, other people saw that energy as they talked to them. So I think be aware of how you're coming through, whether it's just on the phone or it's through like a Google meet or a zoom, if you're actually, you know, having FaceTime with people. Um, and then finally, I would say, make sure you have some kind of follow-up question ready. Um, if you're talking to somebody who knows what they're talking about, they'll probably answer a lot of your questions along the way through the interview. That's fine. I always tell people have like minimum of two questions you can keep in your back pocket that even if they answer everything that you could have asked them, you still have something to ask them. And I think that feeds into showing your interest. Um, again, like I'm surprised at how many people I talk to where I'm like, do you have any questions? And I know that they weren't familiar with the company before we talked and they still don't have questions at the end. It just doesn't show interest. 
Um, and there are a lot of people looking for jobs right now. So we want you to stand out. So even if those questions are something like, I mean, you can always ask the culture question. I love answering that question when people ask me what it's like to work at Method. Um, you can always ask somebody like, can I ask you about you? How long have you been with the company? What's your favorite part about working for that company? That's not something they're probably just going to answer during your interview. And it's something you can always ask and they'll always be able to answer. So having just a couple, like I said, questions to keep in your back pocket that you can ask at the end to show that you're interested, you feel invested, you're excited to move forward also goes a long way. It goes a long way for me personally. So, um, and then of course, you know, as you move through the interview process, I know every company's different. I know for us, we don't do any kind of, um, like coding challenges or exercises. All of our technical interviews are purely conversational. They're technical questions, but we're not having anybody go through any kind of assessment unless you're like at an architect or principal level. Um, so, you know, I'll have people to ask me if I'm moving them through the process, they might say, Hey, you know, I want to make sure I'm prepared. Is there anything in particular I should really focus on for this interview? Um, totally fine to ask. So, and again, you're kind of keeping yourself more prepared as you move from stage to stage. So if you're working with a recruiter or just somebody from HR who's coordinating your steps, if you ever have questions along the way of how you can best prepare, always ask the question because we want you to show up and feel confident too in what you're, you know, you're delivering. And I'll pause there for now. Are there any questions? Yep. We've got one in the chat. Would it be rude to talk about an immigration assistant up front at the end of the first interview? Since I am an international student, I require an H-1B to be able to work with a firm. Always ask. Um, always ask. That's a great question. Also, um, so yes, I would ask that because there are companies that have absolutely no problem sponsoring visas. I know for us personally, we struggle with it um, because of, I'm pretty sure one of our developers is joining right now. <laughs> um, a lot of companies have no problem with it. I think as we continue to get larger, we'll have more flexibility around it. Um, I also know it depends on your visa. So if you are early enough in the process, like let's say you still, let's say your student visa is still good for two more years, that would get, and we want to hire you, that gives us plenty of time to file so that your visa gets situated. So I think it just depends company to company, but to answer your question, 100%, there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking and it's not rude at all. Um, it's a waste of your time if you put yourself through an interview process and then find out that they don't sponsor visas or they don't have the ability to. So, and you want to protect yourself too. It's not rude. Um, I also think, you know, and this also depends on the company. I know for us personally, I also discuss salary in my very first phone call with people. I know everybody has different views on that. Um, for us, it's tricky because we have so many different titles and people fall into so many places that it's often hard for me to give you a range because it's so broad. I'm like, I can give you a broad range, but I mean, it can be like hundreds of thousands of dollars difference. But I always ask people, like, if you're comfortable sharing with me what you're looking for, even if you want to give me a range, that's super helpful. Because if I know we can hire somebody for about $115,000, and you're telling me you won't settle for anything less than $250,000. I can at least tell you in our first call, it's probably not going to happen. Thus, saving you time as well and us time. So, um, you know, I think that might be another tip too. I don't know how many other people are talking about that in their very first phone call. Um, but if you are asked, don't lowball yourself. Um, don't feel like you need to lie about it because you also don't want to say, oh, if I tell them my real figure, I'm going to scare them away. Let me shave, a, you know, $20,000 off of my goal. And then you get to the, the offer stage and they give you what you said that you were asking for. And now you're in this awkward situation because you're like, oh, I actually wanted 20 grand more than that. That's weird. Um, so if you're talking to anybody during the process and they ask you, hey, is there, is there a range or a figure you really want to stick around in your next role? Be honest with them. 
And if it's a situation where you feel a little thrown off and you're like, oh crap, I haven't really thought about it, or I'm moving to a different city, the cost of living differences can be wild sometimes. I've had people tell me like, I'm actually moving to Charlotte from San Francisco, wild difference in pay, right? Um, I've had people say, I'm actually looking into what that might be in a different market. Can I get back to you on that? And I'm like, totally. And they do. And then I can make a note of it. So when we get there, we kind of know what they're, they're aiming for. So that would be something else. Um, when you asked if the, the visa question would be rude, it made me think about salary. So I'm sorry for that tangent, but um, don't be afraid to share that early on, especially if they're asking you. That's a great question though. Are there any other questions? La, I see your hand up. Did you do that on purpose? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Wonderful Kayla, I think I have kind of snippet pieces of questions. I have an HR background from many moons ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really, really appreciate the differential that you provide here because we couldn't do that back then. And um, I remember when I was interviewing uh, a young human that he was concerned if he took notes during the interview, would that look bad upon him? So... I don't think so. Um, at least for me, all of my interviews are over the phone. Mm -hmm. So I also can't see what you're doing because I'm taking notes the entire time. I'm talking to somebody almost word for word. Like I just transcribed the whole thing. Um, sometimes I can hear people typing when I'm talking to them on the phone and I assume they're wow. taking notes. So I don't, I don't care. Um, I've even had people apologize. Like, I'm really sorry. I just want to write this down real quick. And I'm like, Oh wait, you write down whatever the heck you need to write down if it's going to help you. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with, with taking down notes really in any interview that wouldn't be something, at least again, me personally, that would throw me off. Mm -hmm. Um, and thinking of our team members, um, who interview, I don't think they would be thrown by that either. So now my other part of that is, um, is it necessary in the skills section of resumes to list if you know any foreign languages at any level? I know yeah, it's I that's, that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually had a project not long ago with a French company and they were requiring that some people speak French. And we were like, our people do not speak French to my knowledge. <laughs> We found somebody, we found somebody, but, and they had on the resume that they were fluent in, in French. So it worked out. So absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you are bilingual or you're proficient or even have, um, like basic knowledge mm -hmm. where you can like basic communication, mm -hmm. I think that's huge to list in your skills. Absolutely. Thank you. Great questions. Um, we've got another one in the chat for a person making a career change. How should they answer the salary question? Great question. Um, so typically, at least for us, salary is based on experience. Yes. But at least for us too, we like to take into account any former experience that could be relevant to your new role. So even if you're making a career shift you're like, you know what, I'm just starting out. This would be my first professional role as a developer. We also like to take into consideration, cool, but the work that you did previously, how is that going to serve in your, your role now to kind of help you out a little bit? Um, I also am a huge fan of people admitting when they don't know the answer to something. So if you're asked that question in an interview and you're like, crap, A, I haven't thought about it, or... I'm just starting out. I'm not sure how to answer that. I don't think there's anything wrong with you saying, I haven't quite thought about that. I'm just starting out. You know, I can tell you what I was making in my last role, but I understand I'm also making a career shift. Um, I might need a little time to think about that. Can I circle back with you and get you that information? That's also fine. Cause you, you don't, and whoever's interviewing you should be a decent human being to not force something out of you if you're not prepared to, to answer it. So on your end, don't get flustered in the moment if you feel like, crap, this person's asking me a question. I need to give them an answer right now. You don't. Um, 
like I said, I'm a huge fan of people saying that they don't know something. And I know too, for our developers, especially, I see this in so many scorecards, um, feedback of people, you know, where something they'll highlight is wasn't afraid to admit they didn't know something that goes such a long way because we're not perfect. We're all learning technology changes all the time. You're not going to know everything all the time, admitting that you don't understand something or it's something you're in the process of working through and learning will show the type of team member you're going to be. And that's something that's the type of person people want to work with. I think too, um, trying to research like what the position is and finding sort of what the market value for that position is. I know that online, those salary estimators are not always accurate, but they can at least give you a ballpark Mm -hmm. um, of what you might be looking for. Um, And I see that Carlos has his hand raised. So I'll let him ask his question. Yeah. Uh, by the way, kid, I'm also a big fan of people who don't know the question and like don't know. I'm usually like, go ahead and give it a try. Uh, mm-hmm. But my question initially is for someone initially starting get, starting to get into tech, um, what's one way they should structure their uh, resume when they don't have a background, professional background within like, let's say uh, they don't, they haven't done any freelancing, just got out of boot camp or um, self-taught. How should they structure their their resume uh, in which way they can get at least a little bit of recognition from a recruiter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and for people who don't, so Carlos actually works for Method and he helps me with a lot of interviews. So thank you for joining us, Carlos. He also loves Chick-fil-A. Um, so I'm happy that you're here, but um, that's a great question. We talked about that a little bit earlier and what I had suggested was, and you could probably speak to this too a little bit because you look at enough resumes with me, but um, If you don't have professional experience, that's fine. We understand that. But kind of like we talked about before, like you could still break out your professional experience, but then maybe have a section that highlights your project work. So whether you're coming out of school, boot camp, um, you've been tinkering with things on the side and you have some passion projects or side projects that you've worked on, you could highlight those different projects there. And I would strongly suggest that you do it. Um, highlighting to you on your involvement in them, especially if they were team-based, you know, were you somebody who wasn't terribly involved or were you the person that was leading the team? Um, so anything that you can highlight that will show what it will be like to work with you as a team member is huge. So if you can have a separate section for project work versus professional experience, it also makes it super clear for somebody like me, that's like, oh, I can see all their projects this was their bootcamp projects. This is their professional experience. So I would just break it out so it's clear. Okay. Uh, To add to that, the way I usually go about um, uh, telling somebody to structure their resume is essentially, uh, if you have at least any freelancing work, have you done any freelancing work? Usually that goes to the very tippy top. Then uh, it's any employer that you may have uh, or any any experience in other profession that can cross pollinate into the technology field, uh, you know, like front facing uh, uh, clients, uh, dealing with teams and stuff like that, you know, leading teams. So that's typically how I'm like, you know, you should structure uh, your experience based off one, if you have at least a little bit of uh, knowledge in a professional environment or, you know, freelance or something like that. And then afterwards, go ahead and add the skills that can cross pollinate over to. Uh, to development. Yep. That's a huge call out. And that kind of goes back to, to highlighting your skills, right? So especially if you're starting out and you're looking at the job description, you're like, oh, I did a lot of this in this project, bring that to the forefront in your resume. Even if that means you have to take a couple minutes and kind of tweak and highlight your resume for each role. I think the more, the more connections you can make for the person looking at your resume to the role they're trying to hire for is going to be super helpful. And like Carlos said, putting that at the top um, is the way that I would do it as well. And that's how I see most people do it too. I would, if I actually think about it, I feel like it's like their education, their project work or freelancing and then professional experiences after. I have a question. (laughs) Um, I was just going to ask how important do you think networking is when you're looking for a job in technology? So important. I think, I mean, and I think that's just how it goes for everything these days. 
Um, the more connections you can make, the better. And it doesn't even have to be people that you necessarily know. Um, you know, I know that we've interviewed people at the company because somebody sent a message to, they found somebody that worked at Method, sent them a LinkedIn message and said, hey, this is my background. I'm really excited about the work that you do. Is there someone there that I can talk to? And then they find their way to me. Um, and that's what starts the process. And we've hired people that way. Um, so don't be, don't be shy. Um, you know, I know people have even found me and Carlos has probably had this too, where, you know, you can go and look at a company and see the people who list that company. Um, if you go through and you're like, this person does the job that I want, go ahead and send them a message. Um, I know at least for us, thankfully, we have a lot of wildly helpful, nice, kind people, um, who will, you know, I get emails all the time and say, Hey, Kayla, this person reached out to me on LinkedIn. I got their resume. Can you talk to them? Like, you know, even if you don't know the people, I mean, you're kind of like cold calling them essentially through LinkedIn. That's totally fine. That's how people network and meet other people these days. Um, so if you even just have in the name of the company you're into, or you want to check out and you go to their company LinkedIn page, you can see the people who are associated with them and who work for them. And you can kind of pick through and look at titles and get an idea of who would make the most sense to reach out to. But certainly networking both online, <clears throat> excuse me, and in, I mean, I know a lot of things aren't happening in person, but even coming to meetups like these are huge. You know, I know for us, we usually run monthly, we call them career connection meetups. Um, and myself and our director of marketing run those together. And it's really just an overview of the company. So people kind of get an idea of what we're about. Um, I talk a little bit about the roles we're hiring for, do a little Q&A. Um, it's like low commitment, but it gets you exposure to people. Um, we even offer, I have like 15 minute increments where people can then sign up for 15 minutes with me one-on-one -on -one whenever's convenient for them. So we can connect that way. We've also hired people off of that too. Um, so I think, you know, if there are conferences that you're, you're interested in, I know we've hired people like from Denver startup week who came and booked a 15 minute session with me. I never met them before, but they clicked a QR code, booked a session while they were at a career fair and we ended up hiring them. You know, it's like, but that's all just put it in the effort on your end too, to be willing to put yourself out there. And I know for a lot of people that can be intimidating and a little scary, um, you know, if you start with doing, you know, virtual meetups like this, just so you can kind of get familiar with faces and companies, I think that's a great place to start. Um, and then kind of build off from there um, is always a great idea. But I think too, the more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. But yeah, networking is huge. I mean, I met Alyssa year, gosh, years ago. I think I, I think I gave Alyssa an informational interview like three years ago. And since then we've done meetups together. We've become friends. I hired one of her coworkers recently started with the company within the last few months, super jazzed to get him. That was because I knew Alyssa. Um, and she knew he was looking and was like, would you look at his resume? And I was like, hell yeah, we hired him. Um, so it's, it's really all just putting yourself out there, maintaining relationships with people. Um, and like I said, getting involved in the community, you know, as much as you can, even, you know, despite the fact that most of us are stuck at home. So great question, Alyssa. <laughs> Was there anything else anybody had questions on, even if it's not, you know, what we went over? There's one new one in the chat. Do you have any apprenticeship opportunities? So we just, this is our second year doing it. We're calling it the residency program. It's essentially like an internship program. They just last week opened up the portal to accept applications and applications are closed. I think they're closing it on February 14th. Um, so I will, I'm going to do this actually. I'm going to put my email in the chat. If you want to email me, I will send you the link if you want to take a peek at it. Um, but I think that would be cool. And they're, they're looking for folks across all disciplines, not just development, but um, it's just Kayla.Johnson at Method. If you want to shoot me an email, I'll go ahead and send you the little, they put together like a little overview and a blurb on it with a link for you to fill out like a Google form application. 
So it's probably the closest thing where we're trying to get better about having more formal, like set internship programs. Hey, Kayla, just to add to this also, uh, this residency is also uh, a paid residency. Yeah. And we do try to work with you guys, uh, with, with, well, with everybody in general uh, to uh, accommodate the time schedule. But this is a mixture of both shadowing as well as um, actually doing some work. Uh, so if, you know, if, if your schedule permits, uh, I would suggest go ahead join uh or sign up and see where it goes from there because you never know uh for one it's it's a lot of networking opportunity with like actual professionals already in the field and another one it'll be some learning experience for you as well so uh Certainly. i suggest if you can uh definitely sign up uh because networking is i i will put networking above resume any day because yeah. it's definitely the hands that it's definitely the hands you shake uh, that would get you through that door. So yep. any network opportunity, I'll say go for it. For sure. Yeah. And we, and we've hired interns, you know, I mean, this is really only the second year that we have like a formal process or program in place, but I mean, I can think of a specific person. This was a couple of years ago at this point, he wanted to work. We were Skookum at the time. He wanted to work at Skookum so bad and we didn't have a role for him. And he just kept circling back and circling back. And it got to the point where he was like, I'll do an internship. I just want to do something with you. And it got to the point where we were like, oh my gosh, she's asked so many times, can somebody please give him an internship? Um, and we did, and we hired him. And now he's like a senior strategist. He moved out to Denver. He's cr been crushing it for the last couple of years. Um, but that's where, I mean, and that was networking. I think he came to a tech talk, liked it, and then didn't leave me alone until we hired him. So, you know, it's like that networking and like, you know, Carlos said, networking above experience can be huge. And, and a lot of that shows your character too, you know, that you're excited about it. Um, you're excited about the company. So. Are you talking about JT? No, JT is another, I'm talking about Jeremy Arkin. Okay. Yeah. JT is another person. Uh, he initially started going to, he actually started at a, uh, within school going back when it was method through a, a job shadowing opportunity that Method had presented itself. Uh, and I have like posted about it back then in Charlotte Devs and we got a few people from, it was like a mixed crowd. And he initially started through that program and he will also like circle back and, and like pop his head in and, and, and like at Method at the actual office. And now he's pretty much working there. Uh, and this was when he was 18, he started like, you know, going to events, uh, go into meetings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And we did hire him. I think he did two separate, ended up doing two separate internships with us. And then we hired him within the last year. Any other questions? Nope. Um, can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Justin Blackman. Um, I'm currently looking to transition. Um, I'm an experienced IT professional, um, and my current working title is actually a senior software engineer, but my ex development experience has been mostly working on um, ServiceNow. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Um, and I'm looking to transition into a more uh, like traditional full stack um, software engineer type role. Um, and so I'm I guess my struggle is, um, um, trying what what are some things I could do that would make sure that my experience is um, transferred over, but also you know know that um, my development experience isn't like the traditional um, like developer route. Have you um, have you done any work in the more traditional route, like even just like side projects or kind of tinkering with it on your own, or are you going from more like you said that IT background? with nothing on more of like the development side. And I've definitely done some start projects on like some um, like small angler type apps and things and working with some nonprofits doing development work there. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. I was going to say, because that's, that's probably where you're going have going to have to show the connection for hiring managers or like people who might just be interviewing you to begin with. Um, because I've had a lot of people with similar background apply to certain things. And I think if you can 
you know, because you have all of that experience and you've clearly moved up in your role and you want to highlight that because you've worked hard for that. But if you know that your background and what you're most skilled in isn't necessarily what the role calls for, then we want to make it known and shown that you still have the knowledge to do the job. So, you know, some of that work that you've been talking about, like side projects or working for like nonprofits and things, you know, I would have a space where maybe some of that work lives or highlight that on your resume as well. So that when people are reviewing it, they can at least see where you're trying to get into the work and where you're making the effort to learn it as well. Awesome. Sweet. One thing I'll add, Jasmine, also is, uh, at least from my experience, or at least what I usually tell people is quality over quantity. You can have a million and one projects, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're learning consistently from it. I would say have one big project. You can have as many uh, side projects as you can, but have that one start project that you constantly add to, like you add authentication, you add, uh, I don't know, like, you know, some sort of dependency or something like that, that you can actually in an interview uh, be like, hey, you know, I've made this project that has authentication. I use this uh, stack, I've used this, et cetera, et cetera, where you can expand on and you leave kind of like an impression, uh, 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 an impressionable mark on that and uh, the person interviewing because I look at it like, oh, okay, she can handle something on her own and she can go ahead and get it done essentially. So I, I, I'm more of a person that quality over quantity is a lot better. Awesome, I appreciate that a lot. Cool. Any other questions? You've all asked great ones so far, so thank you. Thank you for participating because this would have been very boring for you if I was just blabbing. <laughs> No. Well, I did put my email in the chat. So if you have any follow-up questions, please email me. I'm OCD about my email. So I will probably get back to you way faster than you think. Um, so if you have follow-up questions, please let me know. Um, please check out our job board. Um, we keep our careers page on method.com very up to date. Um, so if you see something that looks interesting or you see it and you have questions on it, email me. Happy to answer anything that you've got. Um, but you know, I really appreciate everybody coming on their Saturday morning and, you know, really, really enjoyed this. So appreciate you taking the time to listen. We are so thankful for everybody coming this morning and we know it's early. We hope you got your tea or your coffee, whatever could work for you or just, you know, <laughs> the candy that works for me all the time. Um, <laughs> I am putting a link if you wonderful kind of people. It is in our chat. And um, we would really appreciate on behalf of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library that you uh, take this survey for us. That would be awesome. So we can continue to have you in our records and have you come see us. And also my friends, we have a, if it'll pop up for me, let me see here. That never pops up when you need it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So since it won't, my friends, what I will do is I'm going to put in our chat for you all a um, link so that you will be able to see that the Code Lab team has some great library free resources for you. So once I can grab that, it will be in the chat for you any moment. And of course, you will have access to all this grand information. Thanks to Kayla and our Alyssa and any of our other Library Code Lab team and Queen City Bytes folks that got to pop up and our alternative method person as well. It's been amazing. Yeah, thanks, and, Carlos. Um, yeah, he might be kind of awesome. So <laughs> he's, he's I, was, I was a little. I was a little bit late, but <laughs> you're never late like, when you come to a technology thing. What? For, <laughs> for shame. That's true. That's true. For shame, he says. So <laughs> 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 it was wonderful having you all. And um, if we don't get those links posted in, I believe, Alyssa, you have a list for us that we can send that to later on. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> so thank you again, you all. This is always fun for us to partner with our outside partners. Queen City Bites is one of my favorites. Don't tell anybody. And uh, <laughs> it's a code lab thing. And please come to our future programs. They will be either on our calendar 
can you drop the link in there, Hillary, for the calendar to Biblio Commons that they can go to? Just in case you want to come back and just look for any of our technology programs. Yes, I'm going to work on that real quick. I can <laughs> uh, filter out the uh, the technology programs. In the meantime, uh, one of the big resources we have that a lot of people don't really know about is if you have a library card with us, um, mm -hmm. if you live in Mecklenburg County, you have access to LinkedIn Learning, um, formerly Linda. So there are tons of technology classes. Uh, you can work through those and earn certificates that you can add to your resumes. Um, so that's one of our big resources that you can get to um, for free. Um, a lot of, we hear from a lot of customers that people have to pay for it to even get to those resources. You just wanna make sure that you go through the library um, because if you try to go through LinkedIn, it'll try to make you pay, but just know if you have your library card, you can get it for free. Um, and we're happy to walk through how to do that. If you give one of our locations a call, email us or chat us from our website. Um, I am pulling up the calendar now. My computer is kind of dragging a little bit today. It's cold Saturday morning. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna, the link I'm sending, um, if you go to cmlibrary.org slash calendar, that will get you there as well. And you can filter down by, I'm trying to filter by technology programs. Let's see. We and have that will several. Show, yes, <laughs> we have lots. We have um, digital literacy classes, We ha which uh, library code lab programs fall under as well. Um, we also have like one-on-one -on -one, um, technology tutoring, um, we have a lot of job help resources as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Kurt has dropped off of the um, Zoom call, but Kurt yeah. was is one of our Library Code Lab members that also works in the Job Help Center and mm -hmm. has a background in um, technology. He has his mm -hmm. uh, computer science degree and also um, was a math teacher. Yeah. So he's got some experience in that realm as well. Um, but if you go to our website at cmlibrary.org, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a um, job center link in the center of the page that you can click on. And there are um, online resources focused in not only Mecklenburg County, but in North Carolina um, that can help you on your job search. You can submit your resumes to be reviewed by people who work um, uh, with the Job Help Center. So uh, any questions you have um, with those, we can um, help you out with that. And we'll send out that full list of some of our technology resources as well that's available to you with your library card. Um, another good one that you can earn certificates with is universal class. Mm -hmm. um, you have the option to go through and um, you can either audit a class or you can take it like an actual class that's kind of um, supervised by college professors mm -hmm. um so you earn a certificate that way and they have like i think they have html css mm -hmm. last time i checked so they have some of the basic stuff if you're really just starting out um but yeah we've got a ton yeah. of stuff just contact <laughs> us if you're looking for resources to learn that's all i have <laughs> <laughs> i could talk for days so i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> Well, thank you again, you all. And as you see, you can reach us any possible way that Google will help, I promise. <laughs> if you all need anything, just go to our samlibrary.org webpage and who knows what will pop up for you. And have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Take, Take care. Thank you. Kayla. That was awesome, Kayla. Well, thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye, everyone.